All right, so here are the five big mistakes that I see most beginner singers make. Run, run, lost boy, they say to me. Hi, my name is Adam Mishan. I'm a singer, songwriter, and vocal coach. And today we're going to go through the biggest mistakes so you can avoid them. So the number one biggest mistake I see beginner singers make is thinking that singing songs is an adequate warm-up. This is a real rookie mistake. It's important to understand why singing songs is not a good enough warm-up. First off, when you're singing songs, you're dealing with different vowels, different consonants, emotions. There's so much involved that makes it very ineffective as a warm-up because the whole idea of a warm-up is to isolate the right muscles and get them working without the wrong muscles becoming involved. The other thing that beginner singers don't realize when it comes to singing songs as opposed to a warm-up is that singing songs will include some of the wrong musculature getting involved. So a warm-up might be mom, 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 mom. Whereas when I'm singing, I might be honey now. I'm using some of the wrong muscles. So some of my facial muscles to create the vibe and the emotion that I want to get out of the song that is not supposed to be there for a warm up. I'm actually engaging the wrong muscles and teaching my body to use the wrong muscles. When we add that mom, 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 my face is totally deadpan. I'm not using any external muscles. I'm just using the muscles inside the throat and the support muscles down below. So if you're one of those who thinks, oh, I could just do some songs to warm up, three songs and I'll be warmed up, ready to go, please consider changing that approach and do some exercises and A-B test it. See if your approach to doing exercises gives you a better vocal performance afterwards than singing the songs alone. I guarantee it will. Another one of the biggest mistakes I see beginners make is not even realizing that vocal health is a part of the picture when it comes to your voice. So your voice is not in a vacuum. What I mean by that is you're a living, breathing instrument. Your entire body is involved in the process of singing. So if you have allergies, that's gonna affect it. If you have lack of sleep, that's gonna affect your voice. If you have swollen vocal cords, that's gonna affect your voice. If you have anxiety while you're singing, that's also gonna affect your voice. So realizing that we are the totality of our body when we're singing is extremely important to make sure that you actually get the most out of your voice. And that's a rookie mistake that advanced singers avoid. They look at the entire body as the whole instrument, not just here. And am I doing the exercises? Another big one that I see all the time is breathing like this. Honey, now, if I start with that before I go to sing, Ah, uh, there's no doubt that I'm going to end up with a strained and terrible sound. Like, no wonder your tone is terrible because you're ready for the note like that. This is something that we call clavicular breathing. So we're breathing from the clavicle. What a lot of people don't realize is when we lift the chest, it's not the chest just rising from below. It's actually the muscles in the neck lifting the chest cavity upwards. And so when I go... Do you see all those muscles engage? Now I've got all those muscles working already and they shouldn't be operating at all. So what we want to do is let the chest cavity relax and now just breathe from the belly. So what we want to have is the belly come out like a balloon, inflate and deflate. And when we get this movement of the belly in and out, we're going to get a much more relaxed approach to the notes and it's going to end up using the correct muscles to project the voice outwards as opposed to using the neck. Another big rookie mistake that I see happen all the time is not paying attention to what your body's doing while you're singing. I made a video a while back called something like the greatest free vocal coach. Essentially what I told people to do is set up a mirror in front of them and that will be their best vocal coach. Because what you could see in a mirror is gonna tell you so much of what's happening in your body as you're singing. So if I close my eyes and I sing, when your legs don't work like they used to before, 
I don't even know what's happening with my face, with my body, with my shoulders, with my whole body overall. I don't know what's going on. I'm so focused internally that, you know, I might be focusing on the words or I'm focusing on hitting on the, the right notes. Whereas if I'm staring right now into this camera, so I'm looking at a mirror and I, I can see exactly what's happening. When your legs know, I see this. This should not be happening while I'm singing. And then I might see when your legs, that should not be happening. We shouldn't be getting this head jutting forward as we're singing. And I might see, when your legs, that again will tell me that I'm doing things wrong. Or I might see, when your legs don't work. All of these things will be identified if we're paying attention to what our body is doing. And so that's why I kind of put it all under one bucket. Because I could have just said, oh, beginner singers will tend to lift their chins for the high notes, which is true. But it's more than that. It's that they'll tense, they'll squeeze the face, they'll squeeze the neck. They'll do so many things that are not necessary for singing the high note. And if we could just peel that back, then so many things improve with your singing. The next biggest mistake I see a lot of beginner singers make is ignoring rhythm. And I know I fell prey to this. We can so often get so particular about the pitch and the pitch matters above all else. And that's partially true because if we're not singing on pitch, then we don't have a song, right? So if I'm singing happy birthday to you, that's not happy birthday by anybody's definition. It has to be happy birthday to you. I have to be on those pitches. But I heard an amazing quote, the right note sung at the wrong time is still the wrong note. And a lot of beginner singers don't realize this. That rhythm is so important when it comes to singing. So we need to be able to make sure that we're singing the correct note at the right time. So if you ever feel like you're singing a song and the pitch is there, but you're not really sure why it's not lining up with the karaoke track or with the instrumental or with the original singer, most likely your rhythm is not on point. The simple fix to this is to sing along with the song and try to identify the beat. And I specifically mention to people to get the beat in their chest because here you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it in your body. And it's very hard for your voice to betray. Like you can even tell in the cadence of my voice right now, it's hard for my cadence to betray what's going on with the beat that I'm creating right now with my, you know, there's a reason why, right? You want to build that into yourself. So we're going to go. Whatever song we're singing, we're just going to tap it out here. I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do ya? It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall. So you see how that, it fits into the, whereas if I go, well, I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do ya? So it's hard to do, but I'm trying to sing off of that beat. And you might notice like, okay, it's, it's almost there, but something's off. Something's weird. I'm not in that pocket. I'm not with the rhythm. Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth. It, you can feel it. Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall. Feel it in your body. You can feel that it's right. So do that with your favorite song. You'll find that you'll be right on the rhythm. And the final biggest mistake that I find beginner singers make is that they think they have to push louder to sing higher. And that's not true. What you need to do is untrain that and actually flip it. So you want to try to sing higher, quieter. So instead of going, ah, 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 and so on and so forth as you go up the scale, what we want to do is actually go quieter. Ah, 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 ah. And if we could train the voice to go higher and find where those high notes are at a really quiet sound, then you'll notice that your voice will come out much easier and with much less strain. 
So if this helped you guys, please leave any questions or comments down below. And if you like this video, click on this one. You're going to like it too.